Royalty versus wannabe. That's what came to my mind as soon as I saw the gorgeous, elegant, and striking pictures of Catherine the Duchess of Cambridge and Prince William at their recent charity polo match. The two of them looked fabulous. They looked regal, they looked royal, they looked elegant, and they just really put on a great show at this charity polo match. And then you compare it to Harry and Meghan, who honestly, most of the times look sloppy. You know, they caught Harry in all sorts of weird poses as he was stretching and stuff, and just kind of became kind of a synonymous of how Harry and Meghan, despite leaving the British royal family, despite, you know, saying that they were gonna be producers and do their own things, that they're still desperately clinging to this minimal aspect of royalty that they still have and how they're just become wannabes and posers instead of actual royalty. But if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network before, hello, my name is Brittany and we talk about everything related to royals because I love royals. And so we talk about uh, news, gossip, fashion, jewelry, television shows, movies, and history. So if you want to subscribe, that would be fantastic. I would love to have you back. I also have a 5,000 subscriber giveaway going on right now. And this prize is the swatch featuring Her Majesty the Queen as part of the Platinum Jubilee. It's called How Majestic and she has an outfit and it changes color and there's also a corgi on the watch. So if you want to win that prize, I will put a link down below in the description and you can go check out that video, make a comment, and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. But like I said, today we are gonna be talking about just like really the huge differences and just the chasm that has developed between Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and Catherine and William. And how really Harry and Meghan, just this move to California, this desperate, bit of theirs to try to re reestablish the magic of royalty is just not working a and b they just kind of look foolish really and so i just thought this was really interesting so catherine and william had this charity polo match this is the first time we've seen william play polo and i think at least over a year or two if not since before the pandemic the last time I can specifically remember him playing polo. It was 2019. It was shortly after Archie was born and all three of the Cambridge kids were out and Megan had that kind of weird disastrous appearance where she was wearing like literally a tent dress. It was like hugely unflattering. And then she was kind of holding Archie strangely and not talking to anyone, not really acting, interacting with Catherine or her children. It was just very odd. Anyways, so Catherine and William are at this event and they just show up. And I remember the first picture I saw them, I was like, wow, they look confident. They look on point. Catherine looks great in an Amelia Wickstead dress. She has these cute little flats on and they just look like they're there to engage and interact. And their dog is there too, Orla. She is following alongside them. So their dog is obviously pretty well trained. I, I haven't been able to get my dog to do that. She's she was hanging around here in my room with me. I think she's gone elsewhere, but uh, I, I could not trust my dog to do that. And so they brought their dog and it was kind of like, gave you flashbacks to when they were first married and they went to a polo match, Catherine did, and William, and they had their dog Lupo there with them. And this was, you know, Lupo was their child before they had children. And, you know, they had this sweet little thing where they could bring their dog out and just, it just seemed like a wonderful event. Catherine, again, just looked absolutely on point. And Prince William did as well. He looked very much like the king he is. And what I loved is one of the pictures that was captured, and I believe it might have been Chris Jackson, but I could be wrong. But there was a picture captured of William, and you could see the, you know, it was kind of one of the things where the subject up close is, is in focus, and what's behind them is kind of blurred. And you can see the blurriness of Windsor Castle in the background. There were at least two shots I've seen like that, but one of them is very, very impressive. Seems, you know, just, just allows people to recall that, you know, he is the future king, that he is, you know, riding for a charity event. And apparently they raised over a million dollars at this charity event, which is absolutely fantastic. They posed for pictures, they interacted with people. It was very much a networking event and they just looked very, very much on point and like they were together and they were, you know, and I loved kind of the ending ceremony where they gave away the trophies. I believe if, I, if I'm looking at everything correctly, Prince William's team did win, like Harry's team, but we'll get to that. And they had this, 
it seems like based on where kind of all the trophies were, we didn't get the full video or I haven't seen one yet of them giving the trophy out to every, you know, team member. But they had all the teams, both teams lined up on, you know, the dais and then Prince William got off and Catherine gave him, a, you know, a kiss on both cheeks. And it was, you know, the, the European way they give kisses. So it's not like, you know, she's actually kissing, kissing him, but mm -hmm, type of thing. And she gives him, you know, he is given his prize. And so it was just very much a, just a classy affair. You could just really, really tell. And people, everybody looked great. Everybody looked, you know, just kind of that nice, easy, casual that comes with polo, but just a smidge dressy, if that makes sense. So it's not super dressy, but has a smidge of it. And I just thought they all looked great. And then there was a great picture of Catherine and Prince William's team together. And she just looked like she, you know, it was just, perfect and easy and breezy and it was just seemed like it was just an incredibly successful endeavor there's also a great moment where Catherine could be seen leaning down and talking you know to messing with the dog talking to their dog a bit which was super cute and then there was another picture as well with her, which i really love and it was just i think partly how the dress is constructed that Catherine was leaning down you know chatting with a little girl and there was just she looked like a queen she had this regal air to her and then as well we got you know not only you know just the kisses on the cheek when you know they won the trophy but we also got they were you know leaving kind of arm in arm and it was just wonderful to see and it, but it wasn't like too much it wasn't over the top and then you compare it to prince harry and Meghan markle i'm sorry but the two of them as like the comparison there's just no comparison prince harry like he looked like a doofus the vast majority of the time and i'm not trying to be mean really but like the one of the first pictures we saw of them at the polo match prince harry is literally you know, squatting down, sticking his butt out. And you just look at that and granted, you know, you can't, you can't time when a paparazzi is gonna take your picture. You can't, you know, every time you could be making a, a weird face, you know, Prince William got caught once, you know, taking a little potty break um, out on like somewhere around, he was, I believe it was a polo pitch. It could have been a soccer pitch somewhere and there were some naughty photos taken of that. but. You know, he was also much younger. Harry's in his mid thirties now. He should know that if he's going to pull silly maneuvers, it's all gonna be caught on film, especially because I suspect that they called and let the paparazzi know they were gonna be there. And not only since now Harry's on the team, you know, any photographer in LA who wants to get a picture of them knows when they're gonna be there because they're a part of the team schedule. So they can always be there to capture them on the pitch. And I just thought, you know, we just saw several pictures of Harry just, you know, looking just a mess. And granted, yes, there's some things you can't avoid, but it's like, but you know, if these pictures are gonna go around the world, put a, a barrier, some sort of something around your tent. And so, you know, people don't catch you doing those kind of strange things, especially sticking your butt out. I still can't get over that picture. But it just was a, a symbol. That was like one of the first pictures we got of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle when all of a sudden they started doing this polo thing again. Because I thought, you know, they couldn't do it because, you know, it was, you know, it's hard on animals or whatever and Meghan's all for animal rights. But apparently, since they have to reestablish that royal connection, they need polo yet again. And Meghan, every time she came out, granted, this is just my opinion of Meghan, based on how she was a royal, it just still continues. It's, I always feel like she looks sloppy she has that california casual thing going but i always feel like it's too casual it's there's no air of elegance to it it's and it's very much like if she was a normal polo wife sure why not you know i think i think her outfits were fine you know they were mostly shorts they were mostly you know oversized t-shirts i still don't get the oversized t-shirt thing it's just not my thing and you know she did that like the vast majority of the time. Of course, I'll go over kind of their mock fancy trying to be British thing later. But it all looked so casual and just their whole, all their interactions lacked this sophisticated manner that Catherine and Williams has. Granted, yes, they are working royals. But I take Catherine and William based on their actions in this recent polo event 
vastly more seriously than Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan just look a mess. They just look like, and you know they're doing this knowing that the cameras are there. So why not try to put on some airs? Because Harry and Meghan's problem is that they, they wanna be royal and they don't wanna be royal. So they wanna do royalty on their own terms. And it's kind of been just an utter train wreck because you really only be royal if you're a working member of a royal family. People like the, the Greek family that, that goes around calling themselves the prince and crown prince and princess of Greece and the king and queen of Greece. You know, everybody's like, yeah, 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 whatever. You know, you have no kingdom. Harry and Meghan are just walking around without a kingdom thinking they are the kingdom and it just looks, quite frankly, silly in my opinion. And this, these polo games were an aspect of that. And because I think what they were trying to do with kind of getting Harry back into polo is they're trying to reestablish that royal connection that they've lost. They've lost that kind of air of royalty. And I think it's really damaged their brand because I think they were really banking, especially for Netflix, on trading off those titles, giving... Netflix access to the real crown, not the fake one that they've created, the real crown, and it's not happened. They can't do it. And so what do we do? Well, we'll, we'll do polo because, you know, royals play polo. That, that was my opinion when I first saw that Harry was playing polo again. It's just like, you know, they're trying to establish, well, he's royalty. He, you know, needs to play polo. And it gives them something to where they're up in front of the public and, you know, and those sorts of things. But there's just, again... It just doesn't read quite as well. And then you have the epic disaster. And it is by far at this point, my best performing video. Megan's very thirsty appearance at the polo match that they did where they were trying to like make it like a fancy dress polo match. And they told the women to wear hats and I don't think really any of them did or fascinators. I don't think really any of them did. Megan, had a, a wide brim hat on, evening makeup. And what I mean by evening makeup, there's nothing wrong with that, but her makeup was very dramatic for a daytime, somewhat casual event. So, and she was wearing kind of like these um, palazzo shorts, which were odd. And it was just, I, I like the blouse, the blouse was nice. But like the whole thing was just weird. And then she has to go up and kiss Harry on the mouth. She can't just do the classy side kisses. Like, I'm pretty sure if I think about it, the only time I've seen Kate and William kiss on the lips was on the balcony after their wedding. Have they kissed after that? Of course they have. They have three children. Nobody doubts their affection, but they don't have to shove it down our faces. Harry and Meghan have to shove it down everyone's face. She has to grab his face by both of her hands and kiss him in front of everyone. And it looked awkward because she has this hat on he's taller than her he can't quite get in there and it just it just becomes very odd and strained and then you have them disastrously trying to raise this trophy up even though my understanding is that actually that they did not win that game so i don't know why they were raising the trophy what they were raising the trophy before like i don't understand like was this all just a fluff for Netflix? Like, I don't understand, but they were trying to raise this trophy. And Megan is there and she's kind of behind and she's just going, oh, happy, happy. And they're like raising it. And then at some point, like she tried to actually grab one of the prizes away from one of the polo riders. And he's like, no. <laughs> and like, she's try, like, they're trying to recreate something. And I think they were trying to recreate the pictures of Catherine and William at the 2011 polo match where they were lifting it above the head and Catherine was down in front, but it was just more natural. Everybody looks more excited, but the whole thing with Megan there, it just looked so incredibly awkward. And then at one point, you know, they're kind of sort of holding it over her head. And then she decides, I, I guess I need to, to get in there. And so she like wiggles her way in with her hat, you know, trying to hold her hat. And then she just goes like this again. And you just see all the pictures of them as well from that event is they're, they're so clingy to each other. And I'll do a whole video on their PDA because I have strong opinions about that. Strong opinions, but you know they're they're they have they're clasping their hands together as they always do. And if Harry's talking to somebody, they're you know their arms are extended because they can't just 
they can't just hold, like they just can't let go. You know, Catherine and William were kind of seemingly walking away from the cameras arm in arm, you know? It was just kind of a natural PDA rather than the forced one, I feel like Harry and Meghan always do to try to prove to people, yes, we love each other. Look how great we are. We're holding hands and we're kissing and we're all this stuff. And it's just, it's awkward with those public di displays of affection. Like, you know, I get it. You have kids, you're married, you know, whatever. Like, I don't need to see it. And I think as well, when you look at these polo matches, I was really hoping the Cambridge kids would be there, but they're actually, I guess, still in school. They will be until I believe like Louis may, may his last day may have been today and Charlotte and George's last day may be Friday or something like that. So they're still actually in school, so they couldn't attend. But I loved how there was a family aspect to it because their dog was there, Orla was there. She was hanging out with them. And what, always kind of bothered me about Harry and Meghan at their polo events as well as the kids were never there. And it just seemed weird. It's like, it's kind of a family event. People come out for the day. So, you know, nobody can see your children, but you can shove them into a mansion and, you know, hide out without, you know, anybody kind of, you know, seeing them. It was just, Harry and Meghan's lacked that family atmosphere that I feel like William and Catherine's kind of events like this always have because either they have the children there or the, you know they bring their dog. So it's, you know, or other family members are there. And this one I think was a little bit more formal because they did have, you know, a charity. It was during the week. So not everybody could come because, you know, they have, you know, actual jobs and stuff. But I really think so just looking at these two events, and I'm particularly just gonna look at with Harry and Meghan, even though they've done polo kind of this whole season, I'm gonna particularly look at their, you know, fancy event where Meghan had the hat and everything and just compare those two. If you look at those two events, Catherine and William defined what royalty is. It is regal, it's restrained, it is welcoming, yet at the same time, somewhat distant because that's, they're, they're establishing the mystique of the monarchy. And that's what you have to do. Royals have to let people in on just a little bit, but not too much so that you, you don't want to avoid kind of having this air of mystery to you. And I think Catherine does that really well. We don't know to a certain extent that much about her. And I think that actually works in her favor in this situation. Now, granted, if you're a celebrity, you know, that is somewhat different, but when it comes to royalty, you really just, don't want to overshare. You're not a Kardashian. And I think Catherine and William showed what royalty is in those type of events. And then you compare it to Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan's, it looked like an act. It looked like kind of a farce. It was overdone. It was overwrought. It was too much. It was, you know, just like everything they do, it's almost over the top because they're almost trying to emulate royalty Yet they're not and they can't because Meghan just didn't even spend enough time in the British monarchy to really understand what royals do and who royals are. And so she play acts and it just comes across looking as silly, kind of juvenile. And I think that that event that they had just was kind of a disaster, really. It just didn't make them look good. It kind of, you know, a lot of people just kind of laughed at them. Nobody had, they didn't have this air of royalty. They had, they were wannabes. They want to be royal. They want to be regal. They want to be all these different things. But, you know, it's, but they're play acting and it just comes across as incredibly disingenuous and it just doesn't work. And so guys, I just think if you just look at the two, if you really understand, want to understand the difference between royalty and wannabes, Look at the difference between William and Catherine at a charity polo event and Harry and Meghan at a charity polo event. There really is no comparison. Well, that's all for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what you think. Do you think Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are just wannabe posers or do you think they even still have a bit of regal air to them? And what did you think of Catherine and William's latest appearance at a polo match? What did you think of sweet Orla and Catherine's interactions with her? I just thought that was so sweet and so lovely and just reminds me is I always think polo and I always think family. It always seems like a family event and I think the Cambridges really encourage encapsulate that. Well, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to look at the giveaway as well. And I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Bye.